You know what sound effect that is? That's a lightsaber. I wonder why. Why did I just make that perfect lightsaber sound no with my knows. mouth? <laughs> because we're talking about freaking lightsabers today <laughs> on this podcast. People were like, did I turn on the right thing? What did I just turn on? People forgot what lightsabers were because Book of Boba Fett's all about uh, not lightsabers right now. But yeah, anyway, now, welcome yeah. back, everybody. This is the Resistance Broadcast. Do not adjust your dial. Although you're on, it's not like one of those things where they could be like, oh, is it the wrong thing? Because they're looking at, you know, their phone. It says the Resistance Broadcast, you know, that we, we're not uploading a different show to our show. So they get it. But I'm glad you're here because <laughs> we're here. I'm John, James, Lacey. We're here to talk about uh, Star Wars. And it's a little different of a show. Usually on Mondays we do news. But let's be honest. News has been pretty light lately. Besides, obviously, the show that's been out, which is the Book of Boba Fett. But we really spent a lot of time on that during the Mando Fan Show. Hopefully you've been enjoying that. That airs live on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. East. Uh, if you haven't been able to join us live, it is on your podcast feed, on your favorite podcast app, and of course, on YouTube.com slash Star Wars Newsnet videos. Uh, so we're doing a little bit of a sort of Thursday show that you're used to from us on a Monday. Uh, but we are going to sprinkle a little bit of news in here just at the top real quick. Uh, the Bad Batch looks like it is coming back this spring. Uh, a lot of people weren't sure when the show was going to arrive for season two. Last year, it started off on May the 4th and ran through summer. Uh, James had a lot of early Fridays because of that. <laughs> 16 uh, so of them. James, James uh, throwing it to you, Bad Batch, this spring, is it too soon? Are you ready for it? Is it the right time? And what are you looking forward to most out of season two of that series? I don't know, man. I mean, the the only thing that like gets me crazy is we do the the morning <laughs> thing or whatever. So sixteen weeks of doing that was last season. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to do that again. The other crazy thing is that you know we don't know when Obi Wan's coming out, but it's kind of been speculated they would they would push these shows all at different times, um, so that you didn't have two Star Wars properties dropping on the same day, but. Mm -hmm. If it's in the spring and it's run for 16 weeks, it seems like that's kind of the area for Kenobi. So I doubt they would wait like through all of the Bad Batch before they got into Kenobi because you still mm -hmm. have Andor. And you guys think <clears throat> I said no, but you guys think they're doing Mandalorian still. So it just seems more likely yeah. that they would be doing Obi-Wan or Andor. We don't really know. Uh, like during the Bad Batch, like at the same time. So it's like. Right. I don't know, you know, what that means. Yeah. But, but I am uh, looking forward yeah. to it. I'm excited. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there, there's been rumors that they're going to split up the Bad Batch into two parts and sandwich it or use it to fill in gaps. Not to say it's a gap filler, but to use it to, to fill in gaps when the live action stuff's not airing. I don't see the problem with them doing both at the same time if they did animated and a live action. Lacey, what do you think? Are you, you surprised that the Bad Batch is coming back this soon? Um, it's not, I mean, it's almost a year out, but but what are your thoughts on, on that news? Which actually didn't come from Lucasfilm. It came from, you know, a quote-unquote official magazine, Star Wars Insider, but the fact that they didn't announce it and it came from there was interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I... It, it doesn't surprise me that it's coming back so soon. I think that they work on these things so early that once they know they have something, they just move along with the next season. I don't think they wait to see how it does. They've planned out like, oh, we're going to budget for this much, um, especially with how people really, really enjoyed Bad Batch. I could see Disney being like, look, we need content for our streaming service. We need to keep people around, especially Star Wars fans. Like we yeah. need another season of this because people really loved it. Um, interestingly enough, I was watching TV the other day, which I never watch like regular TV. And oh, there like was cable? A, yeah. And there was a commercial for Disney Plus, and I got so hyped because they were like all the things coming this year. And they flashed through them all, and they had the Kenobi logo, and they had the Andor logo, and they had Bad Batch, and all this other stuff. So I got really excited because um, nice. we're just starting the year. I mean, it's almost the mm -hmm. end of January already, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, time flies when you're having fun. Uh, it but. Does. It, it's going to be a really big year and I'm really excited to see what else is coming. I mean, we talked about the tales of the Jedi show or what else they haven't announced yet. So I feel like just like the, the book of Boba Fett was like the gathering storm. I feel like us as star Wars fans are also in that gathering storm of star Wars content that's coming. 
Yeah, that's a really good point. And the other thing that might be curious is with three episodes left of the Book of Boba Fett, a lot of people still wondering, will an older Omega show up? And if she does or does not, how does that play into what they made for Bad Batch Season 2? Yeah. So that'll be yeah. interesting to keep an eye on. But either one, way... One, uh, one more that, thing, though. Oh, actually, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm looking yeah. at the dates here real quick, and I was like, you know, what is spring? It says spring 2022. And I'm like, yeah. that's from March to June. And I'm like, you could do all of Obi-Wan and still have a month, you know in between Usually, and then then release clone war mm -hmm, or uh, mm -hmm. bad batch if you wanted to for when it comes to and this is how i understand it and correct me if you think i'm wrong but how i understand like movie releases and stuff when they say spring summer usually memorial day is the cutoff where it's like this is summer a summer movie now spring this to is me is like march bus. yeah so i think march through may for release type stuff is what they mm -hmm. consider a spring, spring release um I, I wouldn't, yeah. even though technically June up to June twentieth is spring. I think that's only twenty like, more days. It's not crazy, but right, right. If you're talking so, like March thirty, or I'm sorry, May, like the end of the month, the thirty first or whatever. Is that is that a yeah. month that has thirty? Yeah, I think they <laughs> usually before Memorial Day is spring, and then once Memorial Day hits, like everybody collectively, even though it's not the official day of summer, oh, just yeah. assumes like, hey, we're in the summer now. People's boats are in the water. People are going Which to the beach. Celebration yeah. weekend, I think. Is yeah. Memorial Day. Yep. Well, hopefully, fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with that uh, when that comes out and whether they split it or not. Again, I don't see any problem with them running an animated show at the same time as live action. I think fans can handle that. Um, but so we'll see. But uh, that's mainly the news we wanted to tackle quick here at the top to uh, grease the wheels. But we have some cool segments and stuff to get into, including a discussion later on whether or not certain lightsabers will be resurfacing in future movies. But for now, uh, we're going to hand it over to James for our first segment of the day. I fear nothing for all this as the Force wills it. Our first segment of the day. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> That's like, uh, like Lacey Empire guys. Like that in, now. Mm -mm. The Empire guys in Empire. You're, you're familiar. Um, no, will the Force this week... Uh, we got a couple questions here, even some from patrons, uh, and which is always exciting. I love getting questions from them. But we're going to kick it off with this first one here um, and be listening to the question closely, Lacey, because you're going first on this one. Will Grogu, right? You're familiar with him. Be with Din Djarin when he appears in the Book of Boba Fett. Now, a little bit of speculation there that Din Djarin <laughs> is showing up in the Book of Boba Fett, but presumably... Uh, will Grogu be with him? I am going to say no, Grogu will not be with Din. I think, uh, you know, as we heard in the last episode, at the end of the episode, when they mentioned muscle, they played the Mandalorian theme, which was like, mm -hmm. it's it's kind of crazy as a Star Wars fan. I just felt like, you know, we're watching Boba Fett on the, on the big screen here, uh, uh, like on Disney Plus having his own show. But as soon as I hear that flu, I was like, oh my God, yes, I'm so excited. I, 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 I love agree with The you. Mandalorian. I just, I don't know why. I'm just more connected to that show than Bo uh, Book of Boba Fett, which I feel bad for Boba Fett fans that are like, this is our time. Um, I don't know. I just love The Mandalorian. So the moment I heard that noise, I was like, oh my God, it's happening. Um, So I think he's definitely showing up. I don't think that's a the question of if he will or won't just because they've said that this season is 2.5 so they have to bring him in at some point to get him uh into the next season of the mandalorian also in that episode as we discussed there's so many parallel like two ships passing in the night exactly of like two of the characters that we love like here and here but they're not touching they're not talking, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think Grogu's still with Luke. So if Luke shows up, sure. If Luke doesn't show up, then no. I think they're going to save Grogu's return with Din for the Mandalorian. Hmm. All right, John, do you think Grogu will be with Din Djarin? <laughs> Silence. I'm going to say, yeah, that's just it's tough. And... Uh, I I don't know. Um, I'm going to say no. Um, but I think that there's a chance by the end of this, whether it's the last episode or some sort of 
post credits final episode like they did with the Mandalorian season two that we do see Grogu. Um, Are you going to count just, that as in the book of Boba Fett if it's a post credit scene? Uh, I know that they count on, the Boba Fett scene as part of the Mandalorian, but at the same it time, it's, like if so it's so tricky. An, it depends on if it's an epilogue or mm. if it's a, this new thing, which is like, I, I didn't consider the book of Boba Fett uh, tease a part of Mandalorian, right, but right. if it's clearly some sort of epilogue, then yes. So it depends on how they do it and what it is. Because people have but, been writing about that scene. They're like, oh, in season two. And I'm like, but it wasn't technically no, in season yeah, two. It, it's like a Marvel right. end credit scene. <laughs> Right, which I'm not the hugest fan of that of those because they're just it's not special anymore. It's like how musicians do encores now because everyone knows they're gonna do it. It's not like we really want more. It's like no, you're gonna go away for five seconds and come back. The shock um, is when they don't do it at a concert. I don't know. What I've you're been to about. I know. Then you're like, wait, what? Really? There's been a couple but, where you watch and you're just like, oh, oh, you're actually done, done. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I I feel like Grogu's gonna pop in here somewhere so we can get an update on where he's at. Heading into the Mandalorian, but I don't so think changing gonna... answer. No, I don't yeah. think we're going to see him with Din Djarin. All right. Well, I'm going with both of you guys that he's not going to be in it. And I think my explanation can be fairly simple. Not that you haven't said it, but sure. It's just that the Mandalorian is the main character of that show. And Grogu took over that show. And they recognize how much, how big of an impact he pulled away from the main character in ways. You know what I'm saying? I think that by the time they were working on Book of Boba Fett, they already knew Baby Yoda was a thing. And so I don't think they would intentionally put Baby Yoda into the Book of Boba Fett because they want that to be his story. And the Book of Boba Fett in general just take grogu out of it for a second is supposed to be a sidestep anyway so i know there if there's a chance or a good likely chance that they're bringing in din Djarin specifically or some type of tie to the mandalorian because we obviously heard the music but the thing here is that i think baby yoda is too much of like the right punch that's gonna be like now all of a sudden what are we even watching this is the mandalorian it's not the book of boba fett anymore Mm mm-hmm yeah. So you, when you get those two together, that's when you know that's the Mandalorian kind of thing. Which, by the way, the the speculation on that too. I'm still not entirely positive we're going to see Din Djarin. I think there I mean, are that's there, fair. there are other options here, and I think one of the more popular ones. I actually saw it in our patron chat early this morning. Was the like the Coven or or the, the I was going to say Bo Katan, the children yeah, of the I mean, Watch. Yeah, the yeah, Children of the Watch, like those those people that he was with that were looking for a new place to go. Like yeah. it could oh, be those people. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, is, I think I keep forgetting I the time frame of like when yeah. this takes place. So I'm always like, oh, this is before that, this is before that. So it's like, you know, kind of tricky because you're like, oh, when was this? When was that? So yeah. Well, that happened done. in season one. So it's like that's more yeah, close did- to like when we're talking. Right, because they haven't like dumped yeah. all their armor and helmets yet. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But so anyway, that, no. But this moment in Book of Boba Fett is after the Mandalorian season two. Yes, you're right. Oh my gosh, see that's what I'm talking about. It's so confusing. <laughs> yeah, he has Jabba's palace. It's all yeah. Post- so it has to be Din or Bo-Katan yeah. <laughs> or. Well, it could still be all them, right? Well, this is what's no, going to happen. It's, it's going to be they a different armor. ship. Anyway, a different ship is going to come flying in. People are going to be like, "Oh, who's <laughs> that?" And I'm be like, "Oh, he's got a new ship now." Yeah, yeah, Din yeah. Then his new ship. Um, let's go on to the next question. This one actually is uh submitted by one of our patrons, Jackie Cobb. Jackie uh, asked the question, "Will we see Jugger. Omega in the Camino flashbacks in the Book of Boba Fett?" So, we speculated a little bit there oh. she may or may not show up, but could she show up? in those flashbacks that we're getting with um, young Boba Fett, you know, yeah. do you think, John, which, what, what are you thinking on this? No, I think that'd be really cool. I think that would make sense. Um, but in order for that to make real sense, you would have to have Omega interacting with Boba. And I don't know if they're going to go there fully with the technology to have him with Daniel Logan's face doing the talking and all that stuff. So far, they've just done like a shot of his, his face. I don't know that they're going to go that far with it for this. Um, and I'm also not, I feel like we're done with flashbacks with the whole he's healed thing. So I, 
I would like to see what why they were showing us the Camino thing, and I think yeah. maybe if the, they and are the same give us, scene twice too, which is weird to me. It, yeah, and if they are going to give us more flashbacks, I think that's going to be the only thing left that they do. Um, but I don't think we're going to see Omega in those if they continue to do them. Yeah, Lacey, do you agree? Uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to see her. I think from my assumptions uh the flashback scenes of camino are about his relationship with his dad that's why you see the ship leaving i think he's coming to terms with that relationship and what that relationship set him up in life of becoming a bounty hunter and becoming who he was before the sarlacc pit Mm -hmm. um which seemingly is this whole series is about him grappling with that of like what i was before what i am now what is my decision moving forward so i feel like these flashbacks are moments of how he got where he is now to explain the story but then also grappling with who he was and the the poor decisions he made and how he got to those decisions which ultimately is because of his dad he is who he is uh he did what he did because his dad was a bounty hunter Mm -hmm. so i would say no that was my long explanation for no No, i know we're all on the same page (laughs) i think uh tonight because i Mm -hmm. i think that you know we, i think all three of us back in the day would have said no you you can't rely live action people can't rely on having seen the bad batch animated I agree. show that you know, would have been my opinion years ago yeah and we've now like since moved into this era where which is good because you know like the, i yeah. was always like all, you know all this stuff is supposed to matter and it's really cool when they do actually reflect those things and they they make everything line up mm-hmm. um but I still stand that I, I think this show is telling this specific story. And if Omega or any of that stuff was involved, they would have probably already showed us her face, you know, right. A- as far as yeah. her being involved in this show. Right. Um, the other, the other thing I was going to say too, is like that, you know, we need to hire some muscle, you know, I was the bad batch and that ties in with, uh, Omega as well, but it just doesn't right. it doesn't seem to mesh as well, especially when they're playing the Mandalorian music. You know, they would if they would have said we could hire some muscle and they played like the Bad Patch theme. I think like, a, you know, for most people, they'd be like, oh, I never heard this piece of music. It wouldn't even register. But then Bad Batch fans would be like, what the heck? <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. but it's too too intertwined with Mandalorian at this point. So uh, I, I'm going to say no on that. Um, one more question for Will the Force this week, and it's another patron submission. This one's coming from Semperfied Danny. Uh, Danny. She wanted to know, uh, will we ever find out how Maz Kanata came to acquire Anakin Luke's oh, saber? Boy. That saber that Rey now uses, you know, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, do we think we're going to see that, uh, Lacey? What do you think? I'm trying to remember. Didn't we... We got hints of how it got to certain places in the comics, right? Didn't we get a hint that it was like someone in a hood picked it up at the bottom of the garbage? Yeah, I'm not entirely caught up, but my understanding is Luke gets his hand cut off, the thing goes flying down, and then like somebody grabs it before it hits the ground. And I, I, I remember reading that, and I've kind of you know, lost on on the comics. I haven't been right. Vader gets up his with hand, and someone else gets the lightsaber. But when these things combine, up. <laughs> yeah. But I don't. I don't think there was any solution or any sort of uh, answer right. to who that was or what happened right. to it after that. People kind of because he goes it looking might have been for Ahsoka. it. He goes looking. He comes back to Cloud City. Right. He goes looking for it, and he couldn't find it. So right it's like, before he makes a new one. Um. Okay. So will we find out from Maz? Can I? I think that it's one of those things. I don't think we need to. Um. So I don't think we will. I think they're just gonna kind of leave it as is. Although it's interesting because she does make that comment like story for another time. Yeah. So it's just, yep. it, it's tricky because I want to know what happened. And I think a lot of us Star Wars fans want to know what happened, but I don't know if that story needs to be told because Ray buried that lightsaber. So it's now gone. <laughs> so it, there's no importance to it. We should talk about it. <laughs> and <laughs> then, uh, you know, Maz's castle's destroyed. We don't see Maz really until the Rise of Skywalker where she's on the base. It's just kind of like, it, it isn't an important note anymore. I feel like it was set up to be important in The Force Awakens and then the story went a different way. So it wasn't needed anymore. So I'm going to say no. All right, John. And I know um, it's tricky, I'm, but no. Um, What do you think? 
I think you think I yes. think we will. Yeah. Uh, because of that line, because she said a story for another time, I feel like we need that closure now, whether it's going to be a major deal or really not one at all. It could be just a matter of circumstance. Do you really need that? You really need to know how she got it? I'm not saying I need to. I just think we will. You just said yeah, that. I, you said, I think we need to know. Oh, well, I, I'm not saying me personally. I'm saying okay. I, think, I think they put it out there for fans to need to know because... Mm-hmm. She said that it's a story I'm going to tell another time and Han sure. died. He didn't get a chance to hear that story. So I feel like the fans need that sort of level of closure. Um, I, I'm, I can go either way on that, mm-hmm. but I think we will. I think we'll find out why. Um, it is very interesting, that whole story about that lightsaber and how it was originally the first shot of TFA was supposed to be Luke's hand clutching the lightsaber and his hand burning off in the atmosphere and the lightsaber landing into a planet. So they had... They definitely had plans for that lightsaber and, and JJ probably had a journey of how it got to Ma- Maz's. So it's somewhere on some pages somewhere. Um, we stop now whether they twist writing that up. rotten hands into Star Wars. <laughs> stop writing rotten, rotten hands. Rotten hands with Palpatine's hand and like just tween that. Gross. Oh, his, his like clone hands that aren't fully formed He's yet like, with the bones <laughs> and stuff? <laughs> I'm like, Your what other hands are we has given about? me fingernails. I need a manicure. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. I think I think we will get it eventually. Mm. I think we I think we will too. But you know, it's not so much because of that line. I just think that just seems like a story that someone, some comic writer or book writer or something like that, is inevitably going to pitch that to Lucasfilm has been like, I got I got a book idea, you know? Or oh, yeah. or somewhere in the process of writing their book, they're like, actually this would make sense because I have the character Maz. Can I can I tell this story? And they're just you know how Lucasfilm are, you know, the story group and stuff. They're like, Yeah, sure. Go ahead. You know, that we we don't have anything. So you're the person, you know, go ahead and write it. Like as we saw recently, like Delilah S. Dawson was saying she was pitching how characters could you know, uh, how she sees it, you know what I mean? And if Lucasfilm goes for it, then they go for it. That's the pitch. That's the next book. So I think it's like the very similar in the sense of like some of these authors, whether they're like for the comics or, or the kids books or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Someone eventually is going to pitch that story in their story or as a standalone. And Lucasfilm is going to say, sure, why not? Go ahead. You know? And I think fans want it too. Cause we said the line and then, the, you, you can be the person who writes it go ahead you know so i think we're i think we are going to get it um but we got a big discussion to get to involving lightsabers however we have another section that we want to cover uh before we get to the discussion Lacey, i'm gonna hand it off to you what are we doing all right guys it's time for the patreon pod race So there are lots of ways you can support us. You can like this video, comment, subscribe, follow us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter at RBATSWN, on, on Instagram at The Resistance Broadcast. But if you want more besides our audio apps as well, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, please leave us a review. You can head over to patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. Starting at $2 a month, you support what we're doing here and what we will continue to do for the rest of this year, which could potentially, like we've been saying, is the biggest year in Star Wars. There's so much stuff that's about to happen. Um, but yeah, we have exclusive videos, mailings, a discord server at a certain, uh, tier and higher, um, lots of different types of perks. Uh, so this is the part of the show that we let our generals and spice runners, our two top tiers be a part of the show. We ask them a question. They give us an answer. We respond. It's super cool. But before we get to that, I want to thank those people. So first up, thank you generals, Carmelo, Andrew Staley, Jeremy Myers, John Reese, Jetta Rosewater, Paul Olson, Oliver Lewis, Frank Grande, Joe Ritchie, Darth Hurricane, John Chorlton, Nick Kratz, Christian Morales, Brian Smith, Matt Chitty, Nathan Shank, Danny, and Val Trichkoff. Thank you guys so much. And our mm-hmm. Spice Runners, David Probus, Neil Shaw, Double C Chris, Kendall Gelnar, Ryan Wara, Dave Hornack, Micah Harrison, and Thomas Hennessy. Thank you guys so wow. much. So Thank you all. First up, well, not first up. I guess this is, I'm thinking it's February this already. Week. It's not. This <laughs> week, we have someone from across the pond. Isn't that how they say it? Uh, from the UK, I believe. John Trollton. Mm. What up? Uh, and up, his John? question was, Boba Fett's character has been given much more fullness and depth with the Mandalorian and the book of Boba Fett. What minor character in star Wars would you like to see get a similar treatment? 
So, John, take it away. Hey, TLB. Well, I picked two, so I'm going to go for it. Uh, I picked Wedge Antilles just because he's a feature in a lot of comics and books, but we never see him too much in live action. So it'd be good to see more of his past and how it all links together. I've also picked Finn. Um, just because it'd be so good to see his, him using the Force and how that could work out. So that's my two picks. All the best. Nicely done, John. Great job. Loved it. So this, John, what do you think? Ooh, tricky, tricky indeed. Um... The Finn one makes a lot of sense to me because John Boyega can just, let's just get back, get, get that jacket back on. Let's get back in the mix, man. Let's get after it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they set the table that he's force sensitive. Uh, seeing him master that and then become a Jedi, I think a lot of fans would flip over. I think Boyega would come back for that too. The Wedge one, you threw me for a loop because I, don't, I was trying to wrap my head around how they would do that. Um because he did come back briefly in The Rise of Skywalker, and there are plenty of stories in the books, as you say, but I'm not sure what, like, would they do a younger Wedge where he's in, in the Academy? Uh, would it be a post-Return of the Jedi Wedge? And then what, you know, what's he kind of really doing there uh, beyond what we found out about him and um, Snap? Um, so I don't know, the Wedge one, you, you got me, That's, but it's a clever pick. But uh, either way, great job, John. Uh, we appreciate you supporting us over there on the other side of the pond. Uh, as Lacey put it, uh, thank you very much. We appreciate it. You're the man. You did a great job. And as always, see you in the chats and see you around, buddy. Thanks, man. James? Um, yeah, I think, I think John, you're right. As far as if you're, if you're understanding this as live action, it becomes a problem. But if you're understanding it as um, like a, a, an animated show or something like that, where it focuses sure. on, on Wedge and this particular squadron or something, you know, that could be really cool. And you could... I would definitely set it after Return of the Jedi uh, and just put it somewhere in that era and probably have him go on his own adventures and stuff. But the other one is... <laughs> I thought the question was minor character. <laughs> I was actually about to say the same thing. Because John Boyega, Finn is not... I wouldn't view him as a minor character, but I think he's thinking maybe secondary. I guess so. Like he's not the main character, Ray's the main character. Yeah, I was like, what's a minor character in, in uh the original trilogy? Han Solo. <laughs> like, not the main character, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. it's like uh when you're you you're talking about one of the big three in that in particular case, but I don't know, maybe the sequel trilogy is a little weird. I th- I know some people even consider like Kylo part of the big three and stuff, and it just gets confusing, like Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. but I, but I understand where you're coming from. That is a character that I think a lot of people want to see expanded on. So good pick on that one. But I, I, for me personally, I think you're more dead on with the wedge. I think that would be a, a, a more, I don't want to say a better story. I would say more appropriate for the question that was uh, answered. I like that answer. Yeah, John, great answer. I think Wedge is a great choice. There are a lot of fans that want more from Wedge, and we're super pumped to see him in The Rise of Skywalker uh, for the little clips that he had. Um, I agree with James. I think Finn is one of those confusing characters that I wouldn't view him as a minor character, but I can get how someone might because it's just confusing. There's just so many characters in the sequel trilogy. Mm. Um, But just knowing that you want more from Finn gets me excited because I am the same way. I think that that character has so much more story to tell, just like Ray, um, and that there could be something really cool to tell there, whether it be, you know, him as a stormtrooper or him after with Ray. I think there's just a lot there that you could tell. Um, so yeah, great answer. So now we're gonna head over to our John to do the discussion. All right, yeah, this week's discussion uh, will the Skywalker and Kylo Ren's lightsabers return in future movies? Obi Wan once thought as you do. Thrown into the ocean of Kef beer, the fate of Kylo Ren's unique and crackling red lightsaber is unknown. While the Skywalker's lightsabers, Anakin, Luke's, Rey's, however you want to call it, and Leia's rest deep beneath the sands beneath Lars' homestead. We saw Anakin's lightsaber play a role in the sequel trilogy, so the question is, which of these sabers, if any, will resurface and take that place after Episode 9? 
Uh, and let's also have some fun speculating what impact or role they could play. You know, are they going to be these big MacGuffins or is it just going to be one of those things where they're an Easter egg or like there's a lot of ways that that, that can happen. Um, so in thinking about this, I just have this feeling and I'm not saying like, oh, I'm going to like predict this or anything, but I have this feeling it'd be a very just alluring and intriguing clip to like tease new movies. And I think I've said this in the past episodes where we see some figure conjuring up the lightsabers out of the sand, but we don't know who it is. And all of a sudden it it just shows that there's a gaping hole in the sand. The lightsabers are gone. And then fans begin wondering like who came there, who knew they were there, who took them. Is it Ray? Is it somebody else? That sort of thing. And that, that idea of just like kicking off new movies with that sort of mystery excites me. So that immediately makes me think that we are going to definitely see those lightsabers. Now the Kylo Ren one, I'm cur- I would love to be sold one way or the other on- in this discussion on whether we see that again. We've talked um, about it before. Maybe that's showing up with the villain. Like Ray is about to fight someone and they light his lightsaber. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, so do you think like where? Do- so why don't we start there? Which of these lightsabers do you think we'll see again? And do you think they'll have an impact? I'm going definitely on the Skywalker lightsabers, the Anakin uh, lightsaber and Leia's, but I'm not sure about Kylo Ren. So uh, Lacey, you kind of kicked in there. So what do you think? You, you you think his is coming back? How about the no, ones that I think she buried? The, I think the Skywalker lightsabers and not Kylo Ren. I was just saying a possibility for Kylo oh, Ren. Int- oh, I think okay, cool. The, okay. the difference between Kylo Ren's and, and the Skywalker ones is the Skywalker, Skywalker lightsabers are buried in the sand, but they're not that deep, I would assume. Like, yeah, you said I don't deep know, look- beneath the sands of, I'm like, uh, I think eight, they are. <laughs> uh, no, I think she Maybe. like, she used the force. So I think those things are down there. I mean, that's totally possible but i see it as yeah. hey maybe they're like six feet down they're not that deep whereas kylo <sighs> ren threw his lightsaber into the ocean like good luck finding that yeah. thing so yes if you have the force or it's conjuring you uh to it then that makes sense and that would be a really cool story to tell but i think more likely is the sand situation because they're just there and it's not yeah. like you could get a shovel and get them. You don't have to get a submarine and 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 James Cameron it down to the bottom of the depths of the sea to <laughs> to get this lightsaber. Um, it is interesting though, just to think about what could happen if someone pulled those lightsabers up because you know before the sequel trilogy there wasn't this kind of connection to lightsabers that there are now. It this whole discussion made me think of Jumanji. Where at the end of Jumanji, they set it up that like they throw it into the water and then Jumanji washes up on a beach and people hear the drums playing and there's like kids in the background. You're like, oh, no, they're going to find the game. Like, that's what I thought of with this whole scenario, because it's like, will someone be pulled to them like Ray was? And why is it calling to this person? Who is this person? Um, Or does someone just know that they're there? So there's so many possibilities you can have with these lightsabers. But I think definitely the Skywalker ones because you can't have star wars without lightsabers and these ones have so much history that go along with them that especially the anakins that if you were to bring them back up like you said john it would be one of those things where fans would be like oh my gosh look 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 it's the lightsabers because they're just Mm -hmm. so easily recognizable especially uh anakin luke's rays Hmm. yeah for sure james so what do you you think do you think those things are staying as relics of the past with the quote unquote Skywalker saga. Are they getting dug up? Are they going to be, you know, MacGuffins? Are they going to be Easter eggs? Where, where are you at uh, with, are these yeah, things? Yeah, there's so, so many things I wanted to, you know, jump in on, you know, like I, I'm, I'm with Lacey. I don't think they're buried that deep. I wouldn't even, I said, I threw out three feet. If it feels to me like it's maybe like a foot and a half or two feet, like just, it's what? just like right there. Yeah. So a gust um, can just oh, because she wasn't doing it that long. I feel like she was just kind of yeah. like and Barry. I think all, all all she was just trying to do was just like put it down, like almost like if it was if it was a body, like that would be six feet down ratio wise. But like it's mm-hmm. not that you know it's not that big, mm-hmm. so it's just like a, a little bit down. But then um, why use the force? That's all I'm saying. Because it because she's cool not gonna the sit movie. there. Yeah, yeah. dig dig down. What do you? <laughs> 
She's a scavenger. That's what she did for her whole life. She's sledding. It she's was back more doing of a ceremony than anything else. I think it was like the ceremonial. John, if you dug holes dude. your whole life and then you learned how to use the force, would you dig another hole? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like she lifted like she... rocks and put, put them no, over I there know. her whole life. Know, but, she, <laughs> but she also she also went back to sliding down a piece of tin down the hill. She like went back to her old ways for for fun. Um. Mm. Those things are like 300 feet under, down. Well, anyway. Um, no, they are not 300, they, 300 feet. Yeah, 300 what feet. the hell? The other thing I was going to say, too, is is you said Kylo Ren's is, uh, you know, deep in the ocean and stuff. And I don't necessarily know that's true either. Like, you, sure. I know the angle that they're showing, you see the waves and stuff. But it's like he's on the wreckage of the Death Star. Like, he could throw that thing, and it's probably not even, like, you know, a fifth of the way to actually get to the ocean that you can see from how tall he is. Some creature so like, yeah. just it hits him throw in it face. down into the wreckage of the ship. I could, I could actually yeah. see, like, another show where they show that scene, and he throws it, and then they show the lightsaber's perspective, and it goes, dink, 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 and it lands, you know, on some metal sure. or something. Yeah. Like, it's believable like to me. All that being said, though, is I don't I don't know that Kylo Ren, like he's a great character, but I don't know that like the like Darth Vader was like this legendary thing. You know what I mean? And I think that's why Iconic, people yeah. would be. Yeah. Like interested in that that story and that history and all that that's tied to the other lightsaber. Whereas like I don't know who would be going after Kylo Ren's unless they were just like a collector of artifacts you know mm-hmm. and it showed up somewhere but i don't think like it would be the main component of a story like you know like you were kind of alluding to like if someone were to turn it on and everybody would be like oh that's kylo ren's lights it would just have to be like he collected sure. them all and you're like looking at him and you're like oh he even has kylos he must have got that from kef beer or something it just this makes me think of very... a meme where he throws it and general grievous <laughs> jumps in yeah it, right? <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, but even still, I think that if if there's one that's more likely, in my opinion, it would be the Skywalker uh, lightsabers. But I'm still kind of like not sure where they're going with like the next trilogy. Like, is that right. going to happen in 30 years from now or is it going to happen in like five oh, years from now? Like that kind of depends to me. You don't on, think they're going to do it, though, right? Aren't you on the side that you're like, why would they need to continue that story? I think that it's hard. It's it's hard to say. Not that you don't want it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you just yeah. don't think that their priorities are with that story right now. I feel like if it weren't for Disney Plus and, and them go branching into doing, mm-hmm. you know, Rogue One and Solo and other things like that, then, yeah, they would probably just want to keep going. But they marketed that as like three movies and it was the end and stuff. And I think they just want to like step away from that for a long time and let mm. those actors age up. Um, and that and they have plenty of ways to tell other Star Wars stories and create new trilogies and do other things in that. In the meantime, it's not like they're just sitting on something and going like, can't wait to make a bunch of money again in <laughs> 25 years from now. Right. Like, so I think. I have a feeling that's the direction they're going. And if they go that right, then it makes sense to bring in the lightsabers again. But if they're just going to tell like the story of Ray and Finn training and stuff like, you know, five years later or something like that, it just seems a little abrupt to also pull those lightsabers back out. You know, Mm -hmm. like what was the point of burying them, you know, in 2019 or you know when the movie True, it's kind of like killing the character thing john that you say like where you're like well what's the point of bringing this character back if you've killed them it's kind of like that kind of thing yeah 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 but i still i mean i still consider lightsabers just weapons i don't um you don't think they call the people or you don't like that they i don't like that they do no I, i think that's silly but John, do you think this is something that has to happen in live action? Or do you think like since they don't know where they're going, someone will write a book or or in a comic or something, they'll they'll bear, bring that's, these up? That depends on if they're going to tell more stories with Ray and all of them. Which Kathleen said that they were, right? Recently she was like, Oh, there's more stories to tell. Yeah, she yeah, she said that. Loose. Yeah, we're yeah. But cause cause then 
the the last memory your average fan has is oh she buried those lightsabers and then if there's a story told that maybe people aren't going to check out uh that a lot of people aren't going to check out where they do dig them up and someone uses them they're given to this new jedi or something (laughs) good point and then they then they bring back new movies and they're like wait i thought they i thought she buried those to honor what why does why does that kid have that lightsaber yeah, you know, so. and ordinarily I wouldn't think too much too crazy of that. I'd be like, they can do anything, John. But I think in a lot of ways that was kind of a burial for Luke Skywalker Luke and, Leia, and yeah. for Carrie, even you know, like a very yeah. specific like symbolism but to all that whole thing. So it would be kind of weird to be like, I thought I thought those characters were buried, you know, and it's like that's no somebody dug them up, <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> in, in, in a comic, and, and book. that's a, you know. You know, we like we were talking about. Uh, we had several discussions about Kylo Ren and and um, selling us as on him as a villain, and how he had to follow the footsteps of Darth Vader, which is impossible. And how do they do it? They did it by him killing Han Solo. And people are like, I hate him. I, can't I did. I hate that. Yeah. Yeah. So it worked. Now what do they do? The, the, what what they could do is they could have them kill Poe Dameron or something. Might not be as big. But it still would work. But all I think if you have these dug up by a Sith or a villain or somebody on the dark side takes those lightsabers, then the fans are like, wait, you you can't take those. Those those are Luke's. That's Luke and Leia's. Who's this evil person taking these lightsabers and what is he doing with them? Mm-hmm. Or what is she doing with them? So I think that'd be one thing uh, that could be interesting having instead of it being the the good person like the Maz Kanata having the lightsaber, it's someone evil who has the Jedi lightsabers. I think that could be something that's pretty interesting. So, um, and that'd be one way to get fans to hate that person. If they take them and start trying to melt them down or like they do something crazy or try to, um, use them for, you know, dark side purposes or whatever and switch the crystals out, who knows? But, uh, that again, that's just wild speculation, but there's a lot of things they can do. And I'm sure these types of conversations are being had for these projects that are being developed for years down the line. Like they're in the room and they're like, all right, let's go around, let's do a vote. Do the lightsabers come back or do they stay buried? And people like raising their hands and like, well, why do yeah. you think this is going on? Why do you think that's going on? And you know, those creative meetings are happening. It's just a matter of executing it because they could bring those lightsabers back and it could be in a very bad way. And then everyone's like, how? Here we, they go back to that whole thing. How could you do that? Disgrace the legacy of Anakin and Luke's lightsaber and blah, yeah. blah, blah. So they'd have to be careful in how they do that. But I also, at the same time, while I w- would find that provocative and interesting for them to conjure those back up as one very loose tie to the saga, besides the ca- the characters that are carrying over, like R2, BB-8, blah, 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 that one loose tie to the Skywalkers, uh, but not go too far with it and still keep everything fresh and tell new stories. I wonder if it would be a scenario because this is fresh in my mind since it just happened, but like Hawkeye has a very interesting storyline of, you know, items and characters. Okay. Items and characters where you have certain (laughs) items from the Avengers that are up for sale at this big auction. Uh, So it's like, you know, items that shouldn't be out there, but they are. So it's one of those things that could you see that in Star Wars where these items just turn up and someone has them or do you think it's more beneficial that it's definitely a character specific thing? And what if it could be a character where it's someone that has the lightsaber and no one necessarily saw Luke Skywalker die and no one saw Leia die, but specifically Luke, someone could pose as Luke and start causing havoc in the, you know, the universe with Luke's lightsaber. And people are like, oh, my God, Luke's a bad guy now. And hmm. people don't realize that it's not Luke. That's interesting. Whereas Ray knows it's not Luke, obviously. Certain yeah. people know it's not Luke, but like, what if the rumors start circulating that it's, oh my God, Luke Skywalker is stealing from people or he's killing people because it's Luke's lightsaber what and if it's, it's a masked character. Clone of Luke Skywalker. I thought you hate clones. I do. Then why? It's, <laughs> it's Luke. Hey, Luke. Um. Well, okay. So here's I had a I had a uh, a speculation like okay maybe I'm part of the story group I'll throw it out there brainstorm sure, sure and and it's interesting that you know you said what you said because I feel like it 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 kind of ties in with mine in a way 
because you're saying, what if this, what if this guy goes and he digs up this or this person, you know, I, yeah, we don't know or a woman, is, but, that would be kind of, yeah, cool. or, well, what I, yeah. why I said that was like a changeling, like, sure, you know, sure. like it could change his Im- the image of whatever mm-hmm. it is. But so I was thinking alien, but, um, so this, this person goes and digs up the lightsaber and they're like, yes, now I have the lightsaber of Luke Skywalker and I can pose as him. What is this other thing? Oh, pff, throw it away. Like, la- <laughs> like Leia is Le- irrelevant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, but, but here's the thing is like, when I was thinking about those two, I, because of the way they're buried and they're sitting next to each other and they're standing over there. Like, I feel like you have to involve both of them in whatever story. And it can't just be, this is Anakin's lightsaber anymore. It has to be like these two lightsabers are important from now on. And I understand that one probably does yeah. clearly doesn't have the history. Sure. But I think the now way that connected. it's set up now, yeah. they need to be connected. And so I thought, okay. What if so it's evil to, villain twins? Well, that's what I was going to say. I was like, you, your story still holds up. You could have two people show up and be like, we are Luke and Leia, right? Okay. But um, my thought was what if they decided to do the Thrawn thing and like pull out the twins story that was never used in legends. Right. Which was used have in new, visions. Yeah. Yeah. But they could have new twins that Leia is teaching and maybe she talks with Leia or Luke as a force ghost and they say, give them the sabers. So she goes back with permission takes the sabers mm. and gifts them. And then now both of those sabers are new legacy sabers again, if you will. So you're I think saying the crazy... passing of the torch with the old. Artifact. I don't even know who these twins would be. Sure. You, they clearly can't be like daughter sons or daughters of main characters. So, I mean, unless she, which is going to cause a fandom problem, she marries or something because it's the new Jedi way that she can have a a, a partner. Yeah. And then they have a, a, a son and a daughter and those are the twins. And then they tell that story as like the son goes to the dark side and the daughter has to save him or whatever the story well, was. Well, you know, people were saying Kylo made her pregnant by, by healing her. Oh, of course. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. They certainly did say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's I saw out that. there. I'm not even lying. That is a theory people had, which I was like, no, he's clearly just, you know, healing her. And it it worked for the camera angle, but some people want that theory. And I feel sorry that they didn't get that into fruition, her having a happy ending with kids. But yeah, no, that totally could happen. I'm kind of leaning on the side of like <laughs> evil just because it's a flip I, on what we've already bad seen guys for sure yeah, we need new bi- bad guys we have no bad guys right now so the question would be like okay yeah. empire has gone palpatine's gone again uh first order has gone so that's why you can't yeah it can't guys. be sith it won't be sith but we've seen there's dark side users who aren't sith who use lightsabers what if it's something um, else outside of sith it's like even i worse. still stand on you gotta have a character that's just not force sensitive that is that scary i think that's that's the no, Thrawn angle. That. that's the martian row thing i angle. was gonna that's say martian the row tarkin angle like i think that is really cool and i think could breathe new light into star wars just being like like i think everybody likes um like breaking bad like uh Moff who's Gideon. the guy's name uh, yeah, Giancarlo Esposito's Esposito. character. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just like something. I, that's funny. He actually is kind of that character in The Mandalorian. I think that's why he actually wrote that character for him. He's like, I watched I, uh, Breaking Bad, loved it. Going to put that guy in Star Wars, give him a Because because I was describing <laughs> yeah. a character like the character he plays in Breaking Bad, which is just a person. Obviously, he doesn't have any powers. But right. it's just like his ability to manipulate the situation and have control over it, it seems like everything. This person is insurmountable. There's no way to beat him, you know, kind of thing. Mm-hmm, I think mm-hmm. that could really be fresh for Star Wars. And and in some ways, like, I think maybe that's why people, like, I don't know, have like a subconscious, right. like, subtle eye roll at the whole thing. Like, oh, it's Palpatine yeah. again. It's, oh, it's the Sith. You know what I mean? We thought we were getting the First Order, um, but it's not the First Order. It doesn't even really matter. It's the Empire again, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I think breathing new life into the story and, and really making it something different could be good. I don't know. Sure. I mean, look at, 
Yeah, look at Leo now we're Lex just speculating Luther. on like the future of this. No, but but franchise. like Lex Luthor versus Superman. He's you know he's he doesn't have superpowers. He's a normal guy, but he has power and influence and knows how to manipulate people. And mm-hmm. sometimes that's enough. And you know Ray could be the Superman to whoever is Lex Luthor. Or, or also but, so, Batman versus Superman. Same kind of deal. Like yeah, yeah. He's so, he's just a person who understands the situation the, enough the, to take the, down the god. But back to Kylo's lightsaber, because I think we're all more leaning towards there's a clearly and we just scratched the surface, in my opinion, on a lot of ways they can bring back the Skywalker sabers. Um, The Kylo one, sort of to your point, James, is interesting because I was thinking back to that concept art of The Force Awakens where Rey's like literally scuba diving to the Death Star wreckage and finding, you know, the throne room and stuff like that. And I believe even did you always picture that as Rey? Yeah, I did. I've, I never, oh, I never put a. You know, it's Ray. Is the it supposed to be Ray? I'm pretty sure the description's like Kira scuba dives in. Is like it? Her, no, weird. Like her I've early never, days of who it was. Yeah. I've never put like a person to that. To me, it just felt like person in the drawing, like random alien or random soldier. You know, it's just like there's a person sure, there. Sure. Weird. And okay. I think even some of the art has the Falcon underwater yeah. with its lights Millennium on. Millennium Falcon, stuff. yeah. So, you know, people are probably going to hear about the battle between Rey and Kylo Ren, and it becomes this legendary story, kind of like how Luke Skywalker became a myth to Rey and such. And people are going to go to that wreckage, especially now that the First Order is gone and maybe it's a little safer and they're not as worried about anyone coming back from the Imperial side people of things. People looking for money. Like yeah, going scavenging Jakku, like Ray did. Yeah. I was gonna say, I mean, yeah. the, the the Death Star is still there. So regardless of whether somebody is looking for the saber or not, they could be there and stumble so, upon the saber and be like, "What is it? Oh, whoa!" Like, and then they I sell think, it, and then it gets yeah. into the hands of the right, right. person. So I I think their lightsabers will be conjured up by someone of power or significance, whereas I think his will sort of come into the hands. I think we could cool like flip where you have like their lightsabers get conjured up and taken by someone of dark side influence, not necessarily force, but evil. And his lightsaber gets into the hands of like some kid who's like a peddler, who's like some good kid. And he like stumbles upon this lightsaber and he doesn't know what to do with it. What if it's like a Gungan or some type, some character like that lives under the, like in the water of little Kefbeer. mermaid. It They have a collection of human stuff in the, Ocean of Kefir. Like, yeah, it's like, the, and instead <laughs> of like what I was describing earlier, like, ding, 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 you know, and it lands on yeah. something above the water, like, you could have it fall into the water, fall all the way down to the surface, and then have, like, you know, James, Schmeagol, like, you, grabbing it up, like, the ring, are you, trying you know to tell what I mean, me, under the water, it's just like an accident. Kind of thing. Are you trying to tell me that, that jacked fish is going to have a lightsaber? Is that what oh, you're trying to tell me right God. now? Yes. <laughs> it's like... <sighs> <laughs> that's the point this whole discussion was just to like lead to that point <laughs> i kind of like the idea though also and i know we've talked about this on previous shows of what the next trilogy could be and we like the idea of like maybe ray going to explore and like find out more about the jedi and look for artifacts or something like we had discussed that a little bit so maybe it's one of those things like she needs a dark side lightsaber to to open something or to get somewhere so then she knows that's there and she goes and gets it herself that's another way she could work it back in because then she has to grapple with the whole kylo ren thing and well, she's a moment of like oh don't for- that's a good don't forget like she's the last person to use that lightsaber right. and she used it to kill kylo ren yes mm. and then bring him back to life i mean she killed bring ben back to life yes kylo ren died wait she used leia's lightsaber no, she killed Oh, oh, we're talking about Kylos. I'm sorry. I'm confused. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. okay. I'm, I'm just like, thinking wait, like it would be cool on. if None she went and conjured up. it too, because there is history there, so she would have to grapple with that, you know, and they get flashbacks and stuff like that. Or they could even let that's how maybe you get Finn involved with some lightsaber stuff. Like he goes back there to make sure that Ray doesn't get, you know, lured by it and he tries to get rid of it. Like there's mm-hmm. a lot of things you could do with that. I I'm, yeah, I'm, as we're going on, and we're getting up against time a little bit here, but I'm I'm thinking we're gonna get all, all three of these lightsabers back in some shape or form, and I, 
I personally think it'd be interesting if you have the dark side lightsaber end up with somebody who's a good person and the two Jedi legacy lightsabers end up in the hands of somebody bad. I think because this they really I think that'd be a fresh take on it based on what they did with the legacy lightsabers in mm-hmm. the sequel trilogy. Yeah, Do you guys have any cool. final final thoughts? I know we can delve into this deeper as as we you know maybe learn more about what they're going to end up doing with those characters down the road, but. I, we haven't really talked too much about these lightsabers in a while, and it's been long enough removed from the Rise of Skywalker where I feel like we can put more of a perspective on it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, any final thoughts before we uh, move on? Um, I hope we see these lightsabers again. I, I really enjoy lightsabers in general in Star Wars. I think it's my favorite. They're part. cool. <laughs> it's my favorite part of Star Wars. I've said that numerous times. That like when I think Star Wars, I think lightsabers, which is kind of the things I was grappling with as we went into the Mandalorian and these other shows is I was like, what do you mean we're going to have these shows with no lightsabers? And then we got one anyway, but long story short, I hope we see these again. And I really hope we see more of Ray's lightsaber, which we saw for like two seconds in the movie. Mm-hmm. Like, give me more of that too. Yeah, that'll happen. Yeah, that's the, a great point for sure. Yeah, I, I like the idea of it being um, with a villain, I, I the flip the script kind of thing. I keep I keep trying to picture though, like I I said earlier, you know, there's the burial aspect of it, so it's like so the villain brings him up, and he takes the lightsabers, but then inevitably when that villain is destroyed or beaten or whatever, and we get the lightsabers back, what do they do with them? What do they, they just go like, we're gonna bury well, him we, again. We're gonna bury him again. I know, yeah. And I'm like, okay, there's got to be something better here, like. I don't know. I guess I guess it would all make sense in the context of the story. Like, you know, they get them back, or maybe they break them and they officially destroy them in that trilogy or something. I don't sure, know. But sure. it still seems to me like if you are going to bring them back, they're going to want to bring them back with purpose so that they can stay in the story for a long time. So it makes more sense to me that like Peace it, it would purpose. be a hero that has to, uh, right, recoup them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In some totally. way. Cool. Um, yeah, so I guess that's it. Um, again, we will revisit this uh, at some point um, because I feel like we can go a lot deeper and bring in more characters and, and, and speculate even further. I, this was clearly a speculation nation type of discussion, and I love having these because it's use your imagination, have fun, and that's a big part of Star Wars. So as long as you do it in a healthy way, um, which we do around here. Mm-hmm. That's what we do. All right. So thanks to everybody for listening and watching and being a part of TRB. Hope you enjoyed this sort of discussion episode on a Monday. But as you're probably seeing on Star Wars News Net every day, uh, there's news, but not a lot. And a lot of it has to do with what's going on with Boba Fett and stuff. Did you but hear what things- Tim said? <laughs> yeah, I know. Did you hear what Tamara Morrison, Morrison said for the 80th time about playing Boba Fett? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, still make sure you're going to the site every day for all of your Star Wars news, reviews, editorials, information, and more. We're going to have a lot of news about Kenobi coming up. I know that for a fact, uh, among other things. So Star Wars News Net every day for all of your Star Wars news. Um, like Lacey said before, though, make sure you do subscribe to the podcast. I believe we just passed 200 ratings on Spotify. Uh, so thank you to everyone who's taken the time to toss wow. us one. Uh, yeah. We're at a 4.9er over there. So. Uh, the good outweighs the bad. We appreciate that. Uh, but keep those reviews coming. Uh, and also, if you if you're on Apple or whatever app you're ha- you, you're on, if they have a rating system, toss us. Uh, a there's top always score a couple. We appreciate that very there's much. Always- yeah, there's always a couple. Uh, but make sure, you, more importantly than anything, make sure you're subscribed to the show, whether that's video or audio, and share us with a friend. Because, like Lacey said before, we're just getting going on 2022, which is going to be uh, literally the the most Star Wars live action content we've ever had. Most Star Wars content we've ever had in a single year. So it's going to be one hell of a ride. So we're, we're glad you're uh, doing it here with us. Um, and that's pretty much it for the plug. So I just want to say you can find me on Twitter at Johnny Hoey, writing and editing at Star Wars News Net and my movie podcast, Just Like the Movies. Uh, we'll be putting out an episode tomorrow on... Um, I don't even remember what movie we picked. Oh, Private Parts. Howard Stern's Private Parts. Oh, that's I right. That. Yeah. I should remember that. Um, James. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Myra Trunks. Lacey. People can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Lacey Gillerin. And don't forget to watch the Mandalorian Minute, a.k.a. the Mando Minute, every morning of Wednesday. 
because one of Every us Wednesday yes. morning. Yeah, Wednesday morning <laughs> will be uh the morning of Wednesday. The morning of what the power of Rangers, the Rangers <laughs> of power. <laughs> uh because one of us will be giving our immediate thoughts on the episode and I think this week is John. Yes. Yeah, James uh filled in for me last week and it is now my turn to give it a go on wednesday so excited for that and of course the mando fan show on wednesdays 9 p.m east youtube.com slash star wars news that videos and if you can't make it live we hope you can because it's always a fun party it'll be on your podcast apps as and well our guest but, is uh, that's our guest is adam russell story of the year bassist right. Also on the Star Wars podcast, Thank the Maker. He'll be joining us this Wednesday. Nice. Uh, and again, if you if you haven't, go back last week on Wednesday. Uh, Mark Newbold from Fanta Track, Star Wars Insider, and StarWars.com joined us. Had a great time with him, as always. It's mm-hmm. so a lot of good stuff coming on the Mando Fan Show. But uh, that's it for this episode of TRB. We'll be back next Monday with another episode of TRB. Probably shaking stuff up, uh, stuff up again with uh, the segments. But we hope you're enjoying that. And of course, we'll see you Wednesday on the Mando Fan Show. But until next time, as always, we'll see you around, kids.